Hello everyone! Welcome to this channel. We will continue our journey on paleontology in this episode. Our topic this time is the Triassic period. While not as famous as the subsequent Jurassic and Cretaceous periods where dinosaurs flourished, the Triassic period also had many interesting things to offer. It was during this very Triassic period that the first dinosaurs and the first full-fledged mammals, our ancestors, appeared. In this issue, we would like to introduce such creatures to you all. Let's begin! The Triassic Period The Triassic Period is the first period of the Mesozoic Era, which also includes the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods. The Triassic period began 251.9 million years ago, when the Permian period ended, and lasted until 213.6 million years ago, when it changed to the Jurassic period. The Earth during the Permian period was very similar to today's Earth, with several climatic zones, including tropical rainforests, deserts, temperate zones, and frigid zones. The landmass at that time was a single supercontinent called Pangaea, dominated by a strange group of creatures called Synapsida, to which modern mammals also belong. The powerful, carnivorous Gorgonops and the docile, herbivorous, slow-moving Dicenodon were also Synapsida. We have more about these amazing creatures in our video on the Permian. Please check it out if you haven't watched it yet. The terrible extinction that ended the Permian and the Paleozoic also ended the dominance of these creatures. The extinctions also wiped out a huge number of ocean-dwelling species. It was also around this time that the famous trilobites disappeared. Insects did not escape extinction either. The cause of their extinction remains unknown but may have something to do with the tremendously destructive volcanic eruptions that occurred in Siberia at that time. When the volcanic ash that had covered the sun for so long disappeared, and the sun's rays once again shone down on the earth, which had been transformed into a giant graveyard, there was a completely different world. It was reptiles, not synapsida, that would rule the world for millions of years to come. While the Triassic landmass was still clustered in Pangaea, this huge supercontinent had already begun to gradually separate. The Pangaean supercontinent was apparently united throughout the entire Triassic period, and from space would have appeared to be a single landmass stretching from pole to pole. However, faults had already begun to form in the crust. In the Jurassic period, a decisive separation occurred along this fault. Please have a look at the diagram here. In the late Triassic, at the boundary with the Jurassic, Pangaea was almost divided into two large continents, Laurasia and Gondwana, which were clearly connected only by an isthmus. The Triassic climate seems to have been warmer and much drier than the Permian. It is said that there was less oxygen in the atmosphere than in the Permian or modern times until 215 million years ago, when the oxygen content suddenly rose from 15 to 19 percent. There was no polar cap, and the climatic zones themselves were not that different, but there must have been vast deserts on the Pangaean continent. The Birth of Giant Organisms In the early Triassic, the living world was actively recovering from the Permian extinction. The most common survivors were the Archosauriforms. This interesting group originated in the late Permian Proterosuchus, a long-faced crocodile-like creature. It appears that its descendant, Erythrosuchus, flourished reasonably well into the early Triassic, but was later supplanted by more evolved species. There are several interesting types belonging to the family Erythrosuchidae, including the armor-covered genus, Chalashivia, the large-headed genus Garjania, and the powerful genus Uralosaurus. 
All are dangerous creatures and are rather large predators, reaching nearly 6 meters in length. Because the large Synapsida now extinct, no one on land in the early Triassic could compete with these creatures. In the middle and late Triassic, however, competition began between Erythrosuchus and related species. It was also around this time that the first full-blown dinosaurs appeared. It was Aeoraptor, a relatively small but fast-moving predator. It is highly likely that Aeoraptor at least outcompeted the slower-moving Erythrosuchus and got to its prey first. Giant dinosaurs appeared at the end of the Triassic period. For example, the armored, semi-aquatic predator Phytosaur. A representative species of Phytosaurs is the giant crocodile Smilosuchus, which can reach 12 meters in length. Other species that lived in the area included the ferocious Aphrasia, which could reach 7 meters in length. This creature already resembles the typical dinosaur as imagined by the general public. Other groups of reptiles were also trying to become competing forces. For example, the Ornithosuchus. It was a somewhat unusual hybrid of a dinosaur and a crocodile, relatively small, only slightly larger than a human, but strong and agile thanks to its tough legs. But by the late Triassic, it was clear that dinosaurs would win the evolutionary race with other reptiles and soon dominate the world. The Triassic dinosaurs were not only carnivores, but also herbivores. The largest of these was the giant Platyosaurus, which lived in what is now Europe. It reached a length of 12 meters. Not just dinosaurs. Other herbivorous reptiles were much smaller, but they were no less interesting. For example, the Rhynchosauria also thrived. This group also includes the Hyperodapodon, a cute little lizard about 1.5 meters long with plump rodent-like teeth. Omnivorous reptiles include the Atosaurus. Some were thought to have fed mainly on plants and looked like armadillos, while others were predators such as the 4 meter long Desmatosuchus. Reptiles actively expanded into the water as well as on land. It was during the Triassic that ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs, which fed on fish and preyed on each other, first appeared. There were even more unusual marine reptiles, such as Tanistrophius, which had a neck twice as long as its body. In freshwater, large amphibians provided some competition, but they too seem to have died out by the end of the Triassic. On the other hand, what is not fully understood is the situation of Protovis. This is a strange, terrestrial creature that lived in the late Triassic. It had a beak studded with sharp teeth, as well as wings and feathers, but it seems not to have been able to fly. The first birds are believed to have been Archaeopteryx, which lived much later during the Jurassic period. However, experts consider Protovis as its ancestor, and it has a skeletal structure much more similar to that of birds. The mystery of the Protovis remains unsolved. Some paleontologists believe that the Protovis is the ancestor of birds, while others defend Archaeopteryx's dominance and consider the Protovis to be an entirely different species or even a chimera. So what about the Synapsida that dominated the Permian, or more precisely, the Therapsid, the most developed group of the Synapsida? Therapsid were hit hard by the Permian extinction. Although more advanced than reptiles in terms of evolution, they were relegated to the fringes of nature. Nevertheless, the Therapsid did not give up. It is also believed that the first full-fledged mammals appeared during the Triassic period. The mammals are descended from the late Permian, Synodontia. This is a small group of therapsid that were fortunate enough to escape extinction compared to others. All mammals are now classified as Synodontia or therapsid. In the early Triassic, there were creatures that resembled mammals but were not classified as mammals. One such creature was the Thrinaxodon. 
It is a predator, but about the size of a fox and looks somewhat like an ermine. At the same time, the herbivorous Haramayida also inhabited the area. In the Triassic period, a group of mammalia forms, which can be said to be the most primitive mammals, appeared along their descendants. Morganu Codonta and Q. Neotherium belong here. One of the most notable of these is a small mouse called Adelobacillus. Some scientists consider it the closest species to the genetic common ancestor for all mammals. These animals may have still laid eggs, but they already had dark fur, were warm-blooded, and may have had mammary glands. Marsupial and placentalia did not appear until even later. Also, therapsid other than mammalia forms also thrived. They were widespread throughout almost the entire Pangaean supercontinent, including the Synognathus, which was about one meter long, the Herbivorus ex eritodon, which was nearly two meters long. There were also much larger creatures, reaching 3.5 meters in length and weighing up to one ton. This Placerius is gentle and slow moving. It is most notable for its magnificent tusks. Rival in size to it is the Lysowikia. This species, like Placerius and several others, belongs to the Stalacaria group. According to geological tradition, the Triassic period ends with extinction. During the late Triassic, many plants that had flourished since the coal era, such as wood ferns and lycopodium, disappeared. Then, in a very short period of time, less than 10,000 years, the large amphibians, almost all the main archosauriforms that were not dinosaurs, and the therapsid except mammals, became extinct. The cause of this extinction remains a mystery. Dramatic climate and geological upheavals may have caused major changes in atmospheric composition, but we do not know for sure. That's all for this video. Thank you all for watching. We hope you liked this video. After the Triassic period, the Jurassic period will arrive. This is the era when the dinosaurs, having won the evolutionary race against the therapsid of the Permian and their Triassic relatives and reptiles, reign as absolute champions. But we will cover that in another video. Please subscribe and like our channel. See you again. Goodbye.